Welcome to AP Environmental Science. In this video, we are going to briefly describe pathogens and other infectious diseases that are transmitted from contact with the environment to humans and then between humans. Now, pathogens are any organism that can cause some type of disease. Now, these can come in the form of viruses, bacteria, protozoan or protists, worms, and fungi. Now, these pathogens can occur in a variety of environments, regardless of whether or not that environment appears sanitary. So you might remember that in hospitals, you might see some antibiotic resistant bacteria outbreaks, or after having a surgery, you may run a risk of infection. So even though you're in a sanitary environment, there is still a risk of some pathogens. However, in sanitary environments, you are much less likely to be exposed and contract these pathogens than you are in a more unsanitary setting. Pathogens use what are called infection pathways, and these pathogens can infect and spread throughout the human population. Oftentimes, in order to join into the human population, they have to use something called a vector. Now a vector is an organism that becomes infected with this pathogen, but does not necessarily show any types of symptoms. So this organism that's infected can then transfer that pathogen to the human population. For example, the mosquito is the vector that carries a huge variety of pathogens, including West Nile virus and the Zika virus. Climate change is also accelerating disease spread. So as our climate shifts, the environment that is suitable for many of these disease vectors is going to be changing. So now we're starting to see a lot of these diseases that are associated with the equator or equatorial type climates are starting to move north and south of the equator. So this means the vectors are moving with that changing environment. And now we're starting to see a lot of these diseases in new areas. Also, with humans continuing to develop previously undeveloped areas and changing those ecosystems, humans are more frequently coming in contact with wildlife, so we are starting to see an increased chance of the incidence of that transmission from a animal or zoonotic disease into the human population. Pathogens are also associated with poverty. Oftentimes, poverty-stricken areas are going to lack sanitary waste disposal, and they're going to also have contaminated drinking water. This means there's a much higher likelihood of disease spread. Now, keep in mind, wastewater also carries a wide variety of pathogens, and about 40% of the global human population does not have access to proper sanitation and hygiene. That means that poverty is one of these leading causes of an increased incidence of infectious disease. We're going to go through a couple examples here, starting with cholera. Now, cholera is a bacterial disease that is associated or contracted from consuming infected water. And this can lead to severe diarrhea and dehydration and if you're not treating the cholera, which is a bacterial disease that can be treated with antibiotics, this dehydration can lead to death. Now, this is a pretty cyclic disease where you consume that infected water, causes these symptoms, and that diarrhea and that waste then goes back into the water, particularly in areas that do not have this proper sanitation, which then becomes a drinking water source for somebody else, which then makes another person sick. Tuberculosis is also a bacterial disease, and this is contracted through airborne droplets or airborne transmission. Tuberculosis is going to attack the lungs, and it causes lesions or little cuts, if you will, along the lung where the tissue is very damaged. Typically, the symptoms associated with tuberculosis would be a chronic cough, and as you're coughing, you are also coughing up mucus that is containing blood, and that's because your lungs are so severely damaged. We also have diseases called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS, and we also have another version of SARS called MERS, or Middle East Respiratory System. Now, both of these are viral diseases caused by coronaviruses. Now, COVID-19 is also a coronavirus, 
and it's identified as SARS-CoV-2. So this is the second major outbreak of a SARS coronavirus. All three of those diseases are spread through airborne droplets or aerosols, and it causes severe respiratory distress and pneumonia. Now these coronavirus diseases are the result of what's called pathogen spillover, or when a disease that originates in animals then spreads to humans. Now all of these SARS viruses originated in bats and then spread to an intermediate host or animal that is in much closer contact with humans, and then it made the jump from those close contact animals to a human host. Eventually it then evolved and was then able to spread from human to other humans. Now with MERS, the virus started in bats, went into camels, and camels did not exhale the virus. In fact, it was actually the mucus and saliva from the camels that came in contact with humans that then made the leap into humans. So this pathogen spillover or zoonotic spillover, again, involves your original host, an intermediate, and then the human host. Typically, that original host is having a very low concentration of this particular virus, and that pathogen is not causing those organisms to really show any symptoms or to really look sick in any way. Eventually, that original host is going to come in contact with an intermediate host, and that virus will make the jump. With the intermediate host, some of those organisms might show symptoms, but again, not necessarily going to see huge outbreaks in that intermediate host, but it really just allows for further mutation. You'll notice that most of the intermediate hosts are genetically a little bit closer to humans, so that means that this virus is learning how to better infect these types of organisms. Then when humans come in close contact with these intermediate hosts, that is when the pathogen can then make that jump to humans. And humans are going to start showing much more of the symptoms of that particular virus because that virus has been amplified, it's been mutating with every step of the way, and that increased exposure could eventually lead to human-to-human -human transmission. Another pathogen that you need to know is the plague. And the plague is a bacterial disease. Now there's two forms of the plague. We have bubonic plague and we have pneumonic plague. Bubonic plague is primarily going to attack your lymph nodes, whereas pneumonic plague is going to attach the lungs and lead to pneumonia. In either sense, the plague is going to travel from a vector, particularly the bite of a flea, and those fleas are contracting the plague from small mammals or rodents. In both cases, you're going to want to treat the plague with antibiotics. Today, there are still random little pop-ups of the plague throughout the world, um, but with modern medicine, we are able to treat this pretty regularly and pretty quickly. Zika virus is a viral disease that was spread to humans through infected mosquitoes, and it is also spread from human to human through sexual contact. Now, Zika causes mild flu-like symptoms in most people, and initially, scientists didn't think that this was going to be too bad of a disease, until they started to notice that women who were infected with Zika virus while they were pregnant tended to have babies that were born with microcephaly, or small heads, and severe fetal brain deformities. Zika virus very quickly moved up to the top of the radar and there have been a lot of efforts to really control this particular viral outbreak. West Nile disease is also a virus and this is also spread through mosquitoes. Now the normal viral vector is between mosquitoes and birds, so our primary host and our intermediate host. But that mosquito can then incidentally or randomly attack humans or horses, and humans and horses both tend to show a lot of symptoms from West Nile. Now again, typically it's going to be pretty mild with just fever, rash, and fatigue. However, severe cases can lead to encephalitis, which is the swelling of the brainstem, or meningitis, which is the swelling of the lining around the brain. In both cases, it is causing severe central nervous system damage. 
Malaria is a parasitic disease, and this is again transferred through mosquito bites. So it makes sense that we want to be able to control mosquito populations. With malaria, this is spread through a parasite that infects the blood of the host, and mosquitoes suck the blood of organisms, then go to another host, and they actually accidentally deposit a little bit of that um, parasite into the new host organism. So what happens is that parasite infects the red blood cells, causing those red blood cells to burst, leads to a whole host of issues, and it actually kills hundreds of millions of people every year, which is a huge number of fatalities, but it's mostly found in sub-Saharan Africa. And because of global um, prejudice and global issues, there is not as much funding put towards malaria as there would be if this severe of a disease was happening in developed regions of the world, which is really a huge environmental justice issue. Now, malaria can be controlled. Um, there are five species of plasmodium that actually cause malaria. So it is only actually transferred through certain species of mosquitoes that are able to host this particular um, parasite. And by using simple measures such as mosquito netting and insect repellent, we are able to bring that fatality rate down. Now, in summary, you should be able to explain some of the human pathogens and their cycling through the environment. Keep in mind that pathogens can occur anywhere and not just in the less developed regions of the world. Climate change is also accelerating where endemic pathogens can arise and that increased human wildlife contact is adding to the spread of these disease. Disease spillover is when you have that increased contact and the diseases pass from animals to humans. And you need to know all eight of those pathogens discussed. So you need to know cholera, tuberculosis, SARS, MERS, the plague, Zika, West Nile, and malaria. Please leave your questions here at the end and I hope that as you watch this video, you were able to learn something.